So if you've got one question, raise your hand, and they will get to you. Please treat them with respect. They're doing a job and taking the microphones around to help you guys ask the questions. But um, I'll kind of start the conversation going, uh, Craig, in terms of I want to know what excites you the most now about being the new Wales manager. Um, the chance of um, being able, like, I want to go to America. And that World Cup, I want to go to, like, I know it's in, like, I know it's Canada, Mexico as well. Um, I don't know, I still have that 94 feeling. Um, I don't want to mention, like, the Paul Bowden one too much. But it was the best World Cup I've, like, ever watched. And 94 had a real big feeling for me as well. It was, um, I, I watched every game in that tournament. Um, like Romario and all of the Baggio and everything like that and just the four of us we could have been there yeah. um, and obviously with this opportunity uh, I got like obviously the Nations League games which are, which are good games for us yeah. I'm looking forward to that but it's to, it's to get the team ready to go and attack that tournament like I want to I go to that tournament not just go to the tournament and like and I don't not to make like, yeah. that we ain't, they, they, yeah. that's not going to be the case. Yeah. That, I don't want that to be the case. Yeah. Um, first, first of all, like, I, I, I tend to like one game at a time. Um, now, the, the Nation League games are really important, are really important for us, um, to gear us ready for that. But before we talk about competing, it's, um, it's about basically let's just get there first. Um, and that's really, that. that's like, I'm really locked in on that at the moment. Yeah, so do you think there's more or less pressure on you because Wales have qualified for more tournaments than ever in recent years? No, I, 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 it's been great because it, I, I feel like Welsh football's in a, in a decent place at the moment. Uh, the exposure of it, uh, that the amount of people um, that I, I've had congratulate me on getting this role is really surprised me and, and, and of course you might be shocked that I've been surprised by it but it, it really has it's like I knew it was big but I didn't realize how big it was um, I like I wanted to throw myself really into this because it's the football side I, I feel quite comfortable um, and confident that I'm, I, I'd be able to have a positive impact but what I like, what I really want to be able to do as well is like have a big impact on, you know, not just like like your grassroots football, but also just the awareness of football all around the country as well. So I get to see the country as much as possible. Like every day I've been in, uh, like the other day it was like, like yesterday it was six and a half hours just analysis, just Turkey, uh, go for Turkey again, go for Turkey again. Like I, I keep doing that. Um, it's mad because I play in six weeks time. Usually I do that with like a game coming within a few days but for me it's so like the football side I've been doing Dragon Park I wanted to section off um, improve Dragon Park but make it a real football centre of um, but also just be open do you understand what I mean like I never close anything off um, and even like being here tonight like I feel the responsibility you have as a is like say the head of football which sounds a bit strange to me um, it's the responsibility is like to be able to do this like hopefully you guys raise money for this like for grassroots and all that as well and for the communities and also you know certain days a week being having to do this which is really important that other you know because we don't you know it is expensive game and it unfortunately become a little bit too elitist for my liking you know with kind of schools for instance was it free it isn't anymore and i, I really find that difficult um, but also, like, like I said, for me, just to be able to just keep going around and, um, and, and try and leave an impact as well on that, um, that, that excites me as well. Yeah, and I've got to say, mate, I think you made a fantastic start by coming to an event like this and doing this and speaking yeah. so openly. <laughs> Sorry. 
Becky Salt. Uh, Craig, I just want to say, you, you go on about grassroots and everything like that. I coach a kids football team. Would you be willing to come along to one of the training sessions <laughs> and show the kids how much grassroots means to you? You're right on the spot, you're right on the spot. Right on the spot. Best, best. In Cardiff in general, you know, and it, 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 I can't be like Cardiff, Cardiff, Cardiff. I'm from Barry. Barry, there we go. Um, yeah, so I'll be here tomorrow when you play tomorrow. Yeah, but no, it, look, look, it's, we're a small nation. We're, we're fully aware, of, like we know that we've always been, stuff that like changed overnight. But we take more pride of being like, I don't know what it is, like, it's, do you know when you, wherever, wherever you go anywhere, you love being there in the dogs. Yeah. But it's like everyone does, so I, I think that's always a good tag to have. Yeah. Um, it's a lot harder when you're like at the top and you, you're the one being hunted down. Yeah. Um, but that creates a difference. But for me, it was like, do you know when, like, say for instance, like, whether I'm in Spain or whatever, and you're talking English and they say you're English, and you straight with no, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs>
that's not what I look to try and do because it's, I've got to be true to me. You understand? So if I say something, then I've, I've got to really stick by it. You know, I'm I'm comfortable and maybe I can accept being able to adapt as well at times because I feel you, you have to. And, and especially in possession, you'll see us adapt a lot. You'll see us change a lot. Um, different shapes. If they go with two, we go three. They go three, we go four. They go one, we go two. So we're always creating an overload. And that's sorry, I want my work. So <laughs> excuse me. Yeah. There's always a solution. Always a solution. And I, I feel if you're in, like if if I'm up north, west, east, and then I'm also giving you information as well, and then you're getting to see it on the pitch, that maybe help um, connect it back to the together, to, to together stronger. Um, that type of stuff. Are you um, like are you really switched in, switched on, and linked into the like the seventeens and the twenty ones? Because I've seen the seventeens have done really well in the last couple of years. So you've got like so much young Welsh talent coming through. Is that something that you want to? build on and breed and bring them through into the senior team as well as that. Yeah, like, um, like youth football's my favourite. I love, like, I, to, to produce kids and to give them the opportunity to play this game is my favourite. Now, um, you know, I was lucky, like, because I, like, I got given the opportunity, so, and I got coached well. So I had good coaches at certain times that really sort of like give me that opportunity, but good bits of advice, some, sometimes not always. Um, but I've, then I think like Anderlecht um, was massive for me because it was like top 14 in the world of producing players. So you had Jeremy Doku, Skarens, uh, Stroikens, um, Duran Vio, who went to Dortmund for 20 million, Sammy, Lam um, Sammy Lokonga. Uh, so it was just the list, list, list goes on. Um, and it was just like that was in, like from the Greeks group. So I'd be watching the under 14s, and suddenly you see, believe it or not, a superstar. So you because they were there. So I went there to watch Ryan Benida. Um, went to Ajax then, but then I picked then a beer up. So he comes in with the 21s. So it's always been part of it. So I like to watch a lot of the younger age groups. So I've watched a lot of them already in the tournaments. And there's a few I really like as well at the moment. Um, Maybe I might look to push. I, I don't know. Um, Emma and Aaron, there's one or two I really like um, under 18s, but they're not playing for Wales yet, they're playing for England. So I have the father's number. <laughs> <laughs> he's expecting my call. I think he's, he's going to tell me to fuck off. But, It's um, it's it's about develop. Like, like I say, develop. Don't we don't develop the players? Now, if you hear managers saying about we're developing players or the younger age groups, please, if I don't find them, please tell me about them because I'm not having that. We borrow them. Like any player comes from Cardiff, no disrespect, you develop them. Because they're with you 11 months of the year. We get them a month if we're lucky. We're not developing. Now we can give little tiny bits, but really if the club doesn't do the individual stuff and doesn't improve them, then we lose out. Do you understand what I mean? So a lot of it's on the club. But for us, it's um, it's to be able to feed the information. Like, i go like just a little bit off track. Like, we, we have to communicate with the clubs as well. Um, so like the first two days, the first thing I done was go and see Aro Bullock, go upstairs, spend a good hour, two hours with him, speak about the players he has, we just open up that communication level. So um, I'm going to go see Luke from Swansea as well, then I'm going to go see Newport. And I've got to do my job. <laughs> so then up to Wrexham, so I want to get the Welsh clubs straight out, hopefully by the end of next week. Be able to, because they've just been away, so I get to see them personally. 
Um, and then you, you go up to the clubs then to see the players who are playing at there. Obviously, you'll be able to pick up one or two stuff. But you've got to get that level of communication because, um, like, how would you feel, if, for instance, if you had a Cardiff player who was playing for Wales? Now, he gets overplayed. We haven't given the information back. So you don't know what he's trained like. You don't know if he's carrying a dream because we actually we've communi we haven't communicated that properly. He comes back. You're expecting to play on a Saturday. He comes back Thursday with an injury. But you weren't prepared. You weren't. No, we've locked him. Would you like him to come with us again then next month? No, you wouldn't. You really wouldn't. It's not our duty of care then has failed. Like, like I said, we're borrowing your players. But we've got to make sure when they go back, they're ready in the right condition to be able to to progress your clubs and improve your performances or sus um, sustain your performances of what's going on and if you're on a good run, carry on that going. Like, I've been 
quite fortunate. I think, like, obviously, I've been at a lot of clubs, so I've got to see um, some of the best practices from them as well. And, and some of these people have gone on elsewhere and kicked on again and done quite well. So, like, sports science wise, it gives me um, a little bit of scope. Um, I was able to, to get someone I, I, I really feel is going to be beneficial to us. Uh, physios is already in a good place. Um, so I'm, I'm quite like, I'd like to see who's there because I'm always afraid if someone could be really good and by me, my world then picking all someone and I've actually lost a real good person who's already there. Um, so I tend to leave it and leave discussions and be able to speak on that. But um, then I, I, like, I, I look at it like, who the biggest, inf who impressed me the most last year? Now when I go back, then without the ball, I really like Newcastle. Yeah. The intensity they were going, they were going at. I really. So who's available at Newcastle? Yeah. No coach wise. Don't ever play it. So I'm, I'm really fixated about Deserve and Brighton. He's just like constantly blown me since Shakhtar. He's blown me away. Um, who's coaching there? <laughs> So you stepped up just, oh, I, I, all we do is nick ideas, <laughs> yeah, so can we nick who's there, who's there, can we get him, we're not paying well, so don't like, but we've got to live, we've got to look at different clubs, different managers, different coaches, obviously you've played at the loads of amazing, you know, some of the best in the world, like you're going to pick up things and learn things and take things from a bit, bit of things, I mean, for everyone, it's, it's what we've done at Burnley really as well, we, 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 we tend to, like we had Pep's analysis guy, he was three years with Pep. Um, so he came in there with us, and he was, um, he, to know those light bulb moments, and you're just like, well, yeah. Um, and I feel like I've gained so much from this guy. See, the analysis side of it really, like, intrigues me, if I can sit here and talk about that for ages. But what makes that analysis guy that was with Pep? Like what makes him stand out from, I don't know, the others, the other people who are doing the same job, do you think? Pep is, um, he's seen a different game to all of us. He's watching a different game. How he sees triggers, how he sees the opposition, what they do, what they don't do, habits, how he's able to throw this up. Now he calls, he races and he'll change, he'll adapt. Um, sometimes, like we always say, like, why did he change it? He didn't need to do that in a certain game, especially like we was talking with the Chelsea one, because he's always anticipating the reaction, like something, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. Now maybe he should, but it, that's just how his brain works. Now obviously that's not too bad because the success he's having. But it's, um, like you, you hear me talk about formations, I'm, everyone always, it's not about formations. It's about like, where can you create the extra player? And there's loads like if they're defending with four, how can we create a five against their back line? Now it doesn't mean they've got to be higher, but if they're defending with five, how do we create six? So we're always in options to be able to attack, but also how do we create the overload there? Now, so you have players keeping three or four occupied, but you have to respect the positions. Now, once you start seeing triggers of who jumps, when's he jump? What brings him out to jump? So we need him to jump, so we need that player there, then he'll jump, then we hit there. So you'll see general habits, and now when you keep going through the game, like I, I'm sorry for boring you because this is really like, like I'm bad for this. It's so bad. It's um, like, and I, I just, I don't know. It just yeah. it, sometimes you'll find it really early, and sometimes you'll find it later. But it's, um, I, it's just the habit of everything that goes on, like from how they build up. How they then, who does this, who does that. Now, if you're forcing that side, then this is where you'll get him. Keeper's always going to go to the left. So let's not give him that left, but we can also play a trap where the fullback's playing cat and mouse because he can't hit the long, he's going to go there. So these moments you see out in the game, um, and, I, and I believe that's where um, the top ones, this is where they excel to the lesser ones. Now, when we were in the championship last time, now, obviously, with Vinny, for instance, it wasn't fair. 
it wasn't a fair fight. It really wasn't a fair fight for him. He was just ripping them up. He was just a cool get anyway. He, now we had a game down here. Um, then after the World Cup, we went on to another level. Um, and it was, it was, and I didn't see it because the Premier League, obviously, with Jurgen and everything like that, is it, there's a lot of very, very top ones. But I, he's in amongst that. But with him in the Champions, I can see you're not watching us. You're not working to stupid hours in the evening. Because like, we're working from 8 in the morning to 8 to 10, like 10 at night. And it's every fucking day. Yeah. This is not like, you're not having time because yeah. these guys ain't having time off. No, exactly. You know, perhaps like to 3 in the morning, I'll tell you like, what he does here, get a bottle of wine, turn a dial on, have his analysis guy with him. <laughs> and he is just boom, 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 boom. And he's worked you out. You want to change something, he's got this. You want to change that, you'll go to that. And that's why, if these guys are doing this, what are we doing? We're gonna, if you wanna, if, if you wanna get it, compete against these people, and that was difficult, because obviously he always has, you know, he has like a top team as well to be able to throw in, but take the top team out of it. Yeah. Just look at him as the, as the coach. He's the, he's the best I've ever seen. He's the best I've ever seen. Yeah, fair, and it goes back to what you said in the first part about when you were playing. It's watching those players put in the extra hours and train harder and be you know, more intense and all the different things that you saw what you needed to do to go up a level. It's the same thing with management, isn't it? It's the same thing with coaching. It is, but it's like as players, I found like a lot of ex players, um, we sort of get stuck in our ways and we sort of we can become lazy when we go into the coaching side, not all. Um, and it was like a lot of analysis people with back, like analysis background that go into coaching. Uh, and incredible with the software, incredible with computers and um, studio and this type. Like it's real. I know a lot of you might think it's, but it's actually really important stuff. Now that's why, like for me, I, like I took my time out to learn it because I was like, I'm not being, you know, like I think if I can do as good as what a full time analysis can do. Um, it might take this amount of time, but so I can be handy on the computer and everything I need to do, I'll be able to do it all myself. Because um, if I mean, you might not always get that luxury to have like six, seven people around you to be able to help you with it. But um, then with a playing background, then I've got a chance. Yeah. Then I've got a chance. But I had to really um, dedicate myself into that as well. It was the football side wasn't going to be enough. It wasn't going to be enough. <coughs> It's really interesting. It is like genuinely really interesting that it's the football side's not enough. You've got to delve into the other side of it as well. Um, Matthew, question with there, mate. Going slightly off piece, do you know? Um, there's no denying your passion for football, your passion for Wales football, your passion for Wales as a country. Your tattoos of uh, Owen and are well documented. So, with that in mind, do you ever look back and think, why the fuck did I play for Team GB? No, no, listen, loads of questions that I'm like not answering it. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's not like it's also you've got to understand like some people will be comfortable with it, some people won't. Uh, it was um, just an opportunity to, to be involved in Olympic wise. And you know what was more for me? Rambo and all that and chance of playing the tournament. That was it. That was it. Did I sing the anthem? Good answer, that <laughs> Hi Craig. First of all, congratulations on getting the job and I think you've really impressed a lot of us here tonight. Sorry, where am I looking? You said right at the very beginning of the evening that you want to play a style of football that you enjoy watching. Have you enjoyed watching Wales the last few years? Manager.
manager and uh, and it's on its honest truth whether it's Errol at Cardiff or anywhere else it's not um, there's not to say I'm right on what I see do you understand what I mean we're all um, football there's no right and wrong way to play this game um, now there's a real skill towards like Mourinho and what Mourinho was able to do defensively and be able to break up from there to what the skill is someone else doing a complete opposite. Um, I don't, like just me in general with international football, I just feel it's it's not at the level it once was. And I, maybe yeah. because Champions League now has gone so high yeah. um, that we're spoiled, we, we, we get to see it, you know, on a weekly basis during the season. And it really is like the best of the best of playing in it. Um, so maybe we get spoiled by the football we're exposed to now. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a, it's it's a good question, um, but it, I don't feel like it's fair for me to yeah try to sidestep the room when we're running. And the more I talk, the more I'm like <laughs> making it sound worse. But it's a good question. Thank you about that. Um, we'll go with them. Hi, Craig. The Carabao Wales at the moment. Would you say is the velocity that you're after for the end effect? You were personally really well done with the team. God, so I, I couldn't quite join it. So, uh, but basically, right, so we're, we're, we're Wales are at the moment, yeah. the velocity where they're heading, do you think that that would be somewhere where you personally would want to be or push a bit more? Where we're heading? As yeah, where we're heading, basically. What's, what's your end product for the last like 12 months? If the last twelve months where we've been previous to where we're going now. No, so where we're going now. Where we're going now. Yeah. yeah. So what are you after? What's the end product of the next twelve months? I'm after um, the identity um, to resemble what I believe or what I hold dear to. Yeah. Um, so it, it becomes clear of what what you're watching. Yeah. And it's like high intensity. So being able to press from the front. Yeah. But also being able to build from the back. But yeah. I'm not. I don't build from the back as an ego trip. Yeah. Now you'll see teams playing from the back, but it's, it's not really clear what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. Now the idea exactly. is, why do you build from the back? Exactly. What's the idea of it? Though, but exactly. why do you do it? Exactly. It's the score. Exactly. Now I want you to throw everyone forward. So basically, exactly. you're flipping. You're coming all the way up the pitch, so then I can hit you one v once. Because but every opportunity on a pitch is, an op is, is a chance to score. Yeah. So even when we have the ball from the goalkeeper, yeah. the idea is to overplay. It looks like we're over because if you yeah. if you commit six players against eight of us, yeah. we have two extra players. We should be able to get out. Exactly. Now if we look after the ball well enough. Now if we went long off that, yeah. now we're outnumbered. Am I right? It's because yeah. you're going to have four players yeah. against our two. So yeah. if we hit it long, really the numbers are against us. Yeah. Now, if we throw more men in, they've gone half, half, and we've gone long, yeah. actual chances of getting second balls are against us. Yeah. So we're just kicking it straight to it. Yeah. So we have to be prepared to play. Now, if they throw everyone here, yeah. and they have to come tight, because if they don't, like give a good play this amount of time, it's too much. It's positive it's too play. Much. Positive play. But then you leave 1v1s. Yeah. So yeah. if you leave that back line then against speed, yeah. So if you push your defenders in as well, because we're pulling you in, yeah. where you, you can't go half-half, you've got to commit. Yeah. Then once we hit the space, then even if you win the second ball, yeah. oh sorry, the first ball, you're in trouble because we're coming on to the second. Exactly. And then it turns into an attack. So every opportunity in the game you'd like to think out is, we're just trying to create yeah. a numbers game to work in our favour. Yeah. So we're always an opportunity to be able to go and score. Good no, it's, it's just what... How it works. Yeah, How and that's works. really, yeah. like I said, with the habits, yeah. without the ball, I really want, like, that's yeah. hugely important for the Nations League. Um, and then in possession, then being able to, to flip it, that we become a, you know, we become a useful team. You know what you're after. Yeah, yeah. Uh, back, question there. I agree. Hi, Amin. Two quick questions. Number one, Isaac Davis. I think you 
well, might have been in you when you were a baby. How good do you think you could be? And number two, on a scale of one to ten, how, how much did you enjoy the last five minutes of the Euros final? <laughs> Talk about intensity, high pressing, runs. He's like really, his level's really, really good. So, um, second year then, scored a lot of goals again. Um, he's a first year, but he kept rubbing his thigh after a few games. So I'm like, after every game, I'm like, Isaac, you okay? And he's like, yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. So this goes on for about a month. So in the end, I'm like, just go and give a scan. I've got to check him out, see what's happening here. He has like a grade three listed tear and, it's, and he's been playing with it. So I was either like, you're either the dumpiest kid in the world or you're the toughest kid I know. And honestly, like I was taken back. Like this kid's hard. I'm telling you now, he's hard, he's game. Um, and he's got, there's something about this boy. So of course, at Burnley, um, it was like, I was like, we, we want this kid. Like Bill? No. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we, well, listen, we went to three. We went to three. You guys no wanted enough. eight. No way near enough. Yeah, yeah. But then a season, a season later, then you don't put him in the first team squad and loan him out. <laughs> so it's like, take your three. But he's, um, but I, I'm, I'm sure he'll be really in the fold this year and then gives us a great chance to be able to um, put a kid with high potential. Um, the Euros as well, I'm Spain, like, it was not, not just as much as the England obviously, but it was Spain as well. I just felt they were the rightful winners of this tournament. Oh, yeah. from start to finish. Yeah. And you know watching the tournament, it's always nice to see that one team that, that excelled from the start and we're able to see it through because they, they deserve it. Uh, Matthew, what are you uh, Great, how are you doing? Um, you already mentioned that you're, you're a Liverpool fan growing up. But your dad was a Man United City fan. I wanted to ask you, what was going through your head on that pitch at Wembley Stadium when Anthony Gerrard stepped up for that penalty? <laughs> Strange final for me, even the build up and everything. Um, because it was like, like I've not won a cup. Like I've lost in finals before and semi finals as well. So, and do you know what it was like? It's so typical as against Cardiff. That it's, but part of me, and it wasn't because, um, you know, of course, like on a selfish, like I want to win, of course. Um, but it wouldn't have been the end of the world to me. And I, and I don't mean that in like a disrespect towards Liverpool either, because I looked at Liverpool and I was like, like they've won like 50 odd major trophies. <laughs> exactly, like, no, but like yeah, Cardiff have won one. Like, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for them to have that moment, do you know what I mean? So I was not, like, and I don't mean that sound. It, it, it wasn't, it wouldn't have broke my heart, do you understand what I mean? It was like, a lot more people would have been a lot happier than me losing out, you know? Yeah. And, so, um, the, the thing about it as well, it was like, even when we went through the team, like, we had a better team. Um, but what kept coming back was like, this team fights. They kept fighting, kept fighting. And so we knew they were never, ever going to be out of it. And even if you watch, like, you had, you had a real good chance for the equaliser and you missed. But we just, no, that was the winning. That was the winning, like, yeah, I touched my brake, this is missing, like, honestly. But you had, like, I think Whitnam, like, hit another corner or, like, no, I don't think it was a long throw from um, Gunnison, yeah, I don't know, I'm sure it was from the left side, and then you just missed. But we, it seemed like we could never scramble it out, because I felt, because you threw it, and I thought we break the squad, it's over. But we couldn't get it on. And then because it kept being set place, and we knew Cardiff kind of at that time were immense with Malky in set place. Um, but then when it went in, like it was just carnage and everything kicked off. I don't know if you've seen it, but like I'm smiling. <laughs> <laughs> and it 
And it wasn't, uh, trust me, it wasn't because I was happy with what happened. I was, you know what went through my head? It was like, um, it was like, no, it was, it was like, gutsy bastards. <laughs> yeah, they never had. And, and it, it was just, I sort of admired that about them, you know, and I admired it about that team and the, like the team I was able to join them that summer. Um, because they were fighters, they were like worked hard, might not have had the ability. Like even if you see us win the league, it wasn't a great like. But as a, a unit and a group of people working hard for each other, that's what it was. That's what it was, and that's what uh, won that league. But uh, going back to that game as well, even when it went to Pens, like we done a good job. We missed the first two. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, Charlie Adam, then missed. So I think we like we missed the first two. So you had an incredible chance. To, yeah. But it was, um, yeah, that was. And even if you watch, even after the game, I don't know if you like seen it. Like I didn't have my shirt. Like I give my shirt to Huds um, after the game. So I didn't. Like, which we do think like no, he like he wanted it, so I give it to him. But I went. Like I didn't go to the group. Like I went to the players kind of straight away because it's unlucky, you know what I mean? When it goes to pens, it's one of those. Um, I actually, after the game as well, was in the kind of change rooms. So while we were like celebrating in there, I was, I was with them. And actually, if you see Steve and Jared lifting up the trophy, you'll see me speaking to TG and Vincent Tan while he's lifting it up. So, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. What we got in the summer? <laughs> No, I just, yeah, I admired not just how they got there, but how they were in the final as well. Um, you know, because they were underdogs. And it was, um, and to credit, like, fair play to them, I felt like it could have easily been, it could have easily been their day. Yeah. So I felt heartbroken a little bit for them, to be honest. Uh, back, better. Um, change the subject a little now. Um, as a professional, what's your opinion on VAR? Because in the Premier League, obviously, it's been a quite a controversial uh, passage through there. And um, there was a proposition put forward by Wolves to try and um, dissolve it out of the Premier League um, uh, for the coming season. Thankfully, uh, we haven't got into the Championship. What's your opinion on it? I, I really disliked it. Championship is fine, and I know they're always going to be those. But you know, when it was a goal, it was a goal, and it was like it was. The, you can hand, I, I, I felt like we could handle the mistakes if he was offside just a little. It happens, you know what I mean? It was, yeah, it wasn't. But what you're seeing now, uh, and the way VAR and they're taking their time with stuff. This year was a real, real bad year for VAR. I think we all acknowledge that. Um, and I just, every fear we had about it is all just rolled into one this season. It's just been, it hasn't been great at all. Now, even if you look at like the offside stuff and everything, now, of course, like if you look at a forward player, now if he bends his run, his body's going to be let over. So, like, I think it should be feet. So if your feet on the offside line, is behind, then you're on site, doesn't matter what your body's doing, because you try and get someone to stay upright, and where we've always talked about bending your run, it's never gonna work. So I'm just talking about it as one example, but I just thought the timing of it, of how long it took, um, it was just, it, we were on the end of a few balance, like I'm sure every club was, but it just, it left a bad, a bad taste in our mouth, like if you look at the forest one, where he said it was handball, I even spoke to the ref after it. He said no. He nudged it there, but he didn't. Then we get we get the letter. Then two days later, saying it should have been allowed. And we had four of those letters that season. I'm sure every other club did, where they admit they got it wrong. Um, and I just like what what what, what is VAR doing then? Um, so the championship. I don't know, like obviously like trust me, it's 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 way more enjoyable. Way more enjoyable with that fan. If if you were to say it was your choice, would you just be in all Yeah, I know I no goal line technology always keep. Yeah. Um, I just I don't know where it like my first concern was exactly what we're seeing now.
then I liked the World Cup in 2018, how they used it, because it didn't involve them suffering every, you know, they left certain bits, and they used it, what we thought were critical moments, but now it just seems to be, um, it's just, um, like, it's, we're just going into too much with it now, and, um, and it's just slowing the game down, and that's, that's not what we want to see, and it's, and even as I don't like what it's like for a player, like what it's players, what it's coaches, and I'm sure for fans as well. Do you know when you score and you're, you're jogging back and we're petrified because we need every call going. And you're just like, oh please. If you're checking on the screen straight away, just looking through, oh please don't be offside, was he not allowed? And then, oh it was just, it was, it was, honestly, it was like an emotional roller coaster. With it. Well it ruins it I think for fans as well. It's like you score like a last minute equaliser. And then you're waiting to see if it's allowed, or you've got to, and it's, it takes the enjoyment, like that, that moment of scoring a last minute equaliser or winner or whatever. You can't, bot like, you can't bottle that up. Like, it's, it's such an intense and just a thing which, you know, everyone's felt. And Vars taking that away, and uh, this but thing's never gonna. No, I, I agree. But does everything have to be right? No. no. Is everything in life right? No. You know, I, I just don't wait to, like, why does everything happen? Like, I love that about football, because we always say you get the rough and the smooth, and, you know, so I don't know. Uh, well, I think I do know, I don't like it. Uh, Matthew, you've got a question for that, Yeah, Craig, can we expect to see players we haven't seen for a while come back in the fall? You mentioned Ravi Matondo, I'm a bluebird through and through, but maybe even a Liam Cullen. Secondly, I think one player we haven't seen full potential for is Brennan Johnson, so what do you think you can do in your limited time with him to bring the best out of a player like that? Because I think he could be amazing for Wales. Yeah, I agree. See I agree. The full country. Yeah, Brendan's. Um, he, he's. I, 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 I agree um, with what you're saying about what you've seen with Wales. We probably haven't seen the level that um, we think he's capable of. I, I actually. He's shown little bits at Spurs, but I think there's levels for him again at Spurs as well. I think there's, I think there's a real top talent in this kid. Um, you know, that's why he, you know, Spurs did lay down a lot of money for this boy. Um, I think he's a real, I think he's one of our real top top players in the next few years. But I'm like beyond excited because he's exactly the type of player I like. Um, he's aggressive with his runs. Uh, if we can just get him to be him. Um, and trust him, um, but every attribute he has, get him to use at the top of his ability. Um, I think I, I think he's players like him um, give you a real good opportunity of being able to go to America. So uh, Brendan is without question for me a huge part of what I'm and play him in the right position as well. Of what I've been used to seeing him, um, I think he's a I think he could have a. I'm hoping I can really get the most out of him because I think he'd be massive for me. Uh, right, we're going to have a question by there and then a question by there and then we're going to be looking towards wrapping up. But we'll start on this side. Craig, we, we all know you were a hot head on the, on the pitch. Always in so and yeah. That's all we've heard is all the defenders in. Oh, Bellamy's always in my ear. Who was the hardest man you ever played against? And did he put you in his place? Um, like, um, right. I'm, you know Ian Wright, yeah? So I watched him as a young kid. So with Ian Wright, I was, do you know when you, I, there's always this clip, right, on YouTube. You'll see, like, um, Nazi Mamid watching Chris Eubank. And Chris Eubank floors someone, and Nazi Mamid was this little kid, little kid outside the ring and you just see like you could see a little picture of him with his jaw just dropped like that's what i was like watching him right i just see but you know it was these bits of winding people up like getting at you getting it so like for me it was like because i needed you to lose lose basically lose yourself out of the gate like yeah more worried about kicking me now, if you get more worried about kicking me and you think you're lining me up, then I can spin you. So I was like, to try and do everything I could to get you off where you wanted to kick me so much, you would lose your defensive responsibilities and your positioning, and all I needed was one opportunity. 
Now, some would fall for it more than others, because um, I didn't believe, believe it or not, I was that good, like I was like, I needed every advantage I could get. So the tighter you get to me, the better my chance of getting in behind. So it was nothing personal. I never, you know, trust me after it, it was like never, um, and nor did I line anyone up. But it was, you, you also had a feeling which players bit, which, you know, and the ones who bit was quite easy for me. But someone or two quite didn't. Uh, I remember like William Gallas, like just give me the dirtiest look ever. Like, <laughs> Like look me up and down, <laughs> and I felt like so small. Like, <laughs> and I never really quite got like Rio. I knew well, um, but Rio knew it. You know what I mean? And I, I sort of because we spent the time as kids together, me and Rio. So we sort of had this mutual. He knew, I knew, and that's why he probably was at the back of me most, like apart from one occasion. There was only one. But the rest of it, yeah, as a kid, from under 18s to, he was always, had me in his pocket, easily. Um, the one, the best one, like, it, it's not just toughest, but the best defender I ever played against was Tommy Adams. Um, honest to God. Um, people, like, I, I, I was the same, don't forget, right? I went up to Liverpool in 89 to watch Liverpool win the league. <laughs> with my old man telling me about Tony Adams' Eeyore, you know? It's uh, honestly, <laughs> it was like, this guy was incredible. And I was lucky enough when I spoke to Sheila, who was the best player you ever played with, Tony Adams. You speak to like, any like, Tony Adams was the best. Like he was, do you know, because I thought I was quick, and I, he was coming towards the end, I'd be able to spin him and be able to run on. Every time I spun, he was already coming out with the ball. You know, he was, and he was playing one twos around me. I couldn't get near him. He read the game, so he was five seconds ahead of me. Five. So do you know when you see like some defenders, and it's it's, it's a shame because they should never really show it. But you look at the tackle, tackle come, and we think defenders do well at tackling. You know, you're a bad defender if you're tackling because you because you you're damage your legs. You're not leading anything. Like with Tony, like we, there was a big thing with Van Dijk a couple of years ago, and it showed he didn't get in any. He's in the right position. And Tony Adams was, and he retired, thank God, like a year later. And I was like, <laughs> like but, he, I, but even when I come off the pitch, I really doubted myself. Because I thought, if I'm a good young player, I am nowhere near the level to be competing with the likes of him. Nowhere near, because I'm like, oh, I'm so doubt about 20 years. He was, um, he was. Yeah. No, can you, can you just wanted to, like, get involved in all the little stuff, you know? But he wasn't, like, he felt with Tony Adams, you couldn't even talk, like, I, do you know what I was doing? I was listening to him, watching how he controlled the defenders, and, you know, telling Dixon how well he's doing, and just come in here a little bit, no, no, over there. So I was like, like, mesmerized by him, not just like as a player, but as a leader, and, and how he commanded the team and everyone, and um, he was like, he was, yeah, he, he was incredible. John Terry was a really good player, but he suited me a little bit. He su he, under Mourinho, he didn't, because Mourinho was very deep, so there was no space to attack him. Now, when Villas Boyos came in and he wanted to go a little bit higher, that's why he got him out. You know, John Terry went upstairs and this guy's got to go, because he was exposing him. So, he, when he was defending high, he couldn't defend that, but anything deep. Now we talk about box defending and clearing, that's where he was really, really good. Yeah, and he was, if anything coming to the box, he was first in. First in. <laughs> uh, so we'll have that uh, last question by there. Hello. Um, so I do apologise. I know I've been told I only have to do one, but I got to, I do apologise. So, stay by your own rules. Um, Paul Mullen, yes or no? So, uh, I can't rule anyone in or out, it's just not, it's not fair, but I, I just give time on that one. Uh, so, we'll finish off then, who was the most overrated player you played with? Much <laughs> 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 
Rafa, overrated player I played with, John R. Risa.